Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a panorama in Lightroom. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And apparently, we're making Lightroom fun as well because that's what today's episode is all about. And I'm really pumped about today's episode because they've just updated Lightroom and they added a feature that I think has been missing for a long time. And that's the ability to create a panorama within Lightroom. All right, so keep in mind, this is brand new into Lightroom. So if you haven't done your update, be sure to do so. You need to be using Adobe Photoshop CC 2015 or newer. And if you have the Creative Cloud subscription, just go right on your computer to your Adobe Creative Cloud Make sure you go to your Lightroom CC 2015 and hit the update button if it's there. You can see mine is up to date, so it says up to date. All right, so for those of you guys who don't know what a panorama is, it's basically the combination of multiple different photos that are put together to create a wider field of view than you could normally get. They're very commonly used in landscape photography. So you can start on one side of the horizon and take pictures over and over and over again while you're moving your camera, and then using software, you can stitch these together. A few years ago, panoramas could basically only be done in Photoshop or some specialized software. But recently, a lot of cameras are actually getting panoramas built into them. Even the iPhone has a panorama mode, where you just click a button, rotate your screen, and it creates an output panorama. Now in today's episode, we're gonna show you how to do the same thing in Lightroom. And the obvious advantage here is that you're gonna be able to use files from your digital SLR camera, which means you're going to get the quality and the size available to you in a modern digital SLR. So it's really combining the best of both worlds. We've got professional cameras used to create the images, and then we've got Lightroom used to stitch those images together. Cool, let's go ahead and jump into Lightroom. All right, so we're starting in the very beginning here in Lightroom. So what I'm gonna do is drag a folder into Lightroom. So I've got my Milky Way folder here. These are a bunch of NEF images, which are Nikon raw images of uh, a star trail, basically. So we're gonna click here and drag them right into Lightroom. This is actually my favorite way to import into Lightroom. You don't have to go finding all this stuff in Lightroom. I prefer to just use the finder window instead. So here are our images. We're gonna go ahead and hit import and it's going to just add them into our Lightroom catalog. Now in this case, we actually have a special panorama that's going to be vertical. So let's click at our images and just scroll from the left to the right to see what we're doing. So basically we're going from the bottom of the sky to the top of the sky. So most people think of panoramas, they think left to right, but if you got a lot of information you needed to capture from top to bottom, you can do that as well. So to actually create our panorama, what we're gonna do is shift click on all the images we want to include. Now, if you have any extra images in here, it's not a huge deal. Lightroom is gonna do a pretty good job of figuring out which ones are extras and only using the ones that it needs. So I'm gonna right click and go down to where it says photo merge. And then we're just gonna go right to panorama, which you can see the keyboard shortcut is control or command M. So panorama, and here we have our panorama merge preview. So Lightroom's gonna take a second and render out a preview. And then it's gonna give you this. Here is our panorama. And we have a few options here. The option to auto select the projection. We can actually choose things like cylindrical projection if we want. It's just gonna give you a different look and it's basically based on how it's actually calculating that panorama. For more information on how these panoramas are created, check out our description right down below. Now in this case, I'm gonna click on auto and that's going to choose spherical. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and click on this auto crop button. That's just gonna figure out anywhere we've got white area, which in this case is all around here. It's gonna go ahead and get rid of all that and crop us into our final photo. Okay, from here, all we have to do is hit merge and it's going to output a panorama. Now, the coolest part is it's doing this in the background. So I can continue to work in Lightroom as we're creating our panorama. And when it's done, it's gonna stick it right here in our window. All right, now, depending on the speed of your machine, Lightroom is going to take anywhere from a couple of seconds to just about forever to create this actual panorama. I'm on a pretty new MacBook Pro here and it took about a minute, which is really not that bad considering the original files or Nikon D800 files, which are 36 megapixels. So let's go ahead and click on our output panorama. Now there are two things that I really like about this. First is it creates a legitimate file in the same folder. So you can see here in our folder where we loaded all of our NEF documents, which are Nikon raw files. Now we have DC, DSC 8860-pano.dng and .dng is a raw file. So two things that I like. First is that it creates an actual file and sticks it with the original source images. And second, 
that file is a raw file, which now means we have as much editing capability as we had with the original 16-bit images. So let's go ahead and take a look at our output panorama. All right, I'm gonna full screen Lightroom here and we're gonna take a look at the notes for this actual image. So here in our metadata, you can see the crop dimensions are 5658 by 8780, which is a lot larger than anything you're gonna be able to get straight out of any modern digital SLR. So our output panorama is huge and it's got a ton of information. I can click and zoom in and you can see just how much information we have in this panorama. Clicking and zooming out, you can see that was just one small area of this photo. Now, in my opinion, the biggest advantage of using Lightroom for your panorama is that it creates a raw file that you can then edit just as though you were editing your original raw files out of your camera. So let's do, go ahead and do some editing here. I'm gonna bring up our clarity. So we've got an image of a starry sky and clarity is gonna look really good there. Look at that. From zero all the way, yeah, we're just gonna crank it up. We're gonna bring up our vibrance to add a little bit more color as well. We can work on our black level. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. Then we're gonna bring up our white level just a little bit here. <laughs> That's way too much. All right. So we can see zooming in, we have all the detail that a digital SLR will capture and it's combined many different exposures to get one final output panorama. All right guys, and that's all there is to creating a panorama in Lightroom. Just be sure to take the following steps. First, be sure you're using Adobe Lightroom CC 2015. If you haven't made your updates, go ahead and log into your Creative Cloud and update to the latest version of Lightroom. Then it's time for you to capture your photos for the panorama. You can see you can go either left or the right, or you can go up and down as you sweep. Next, import your images into Lightroom, select them all, and then right click and go down to Photo Merge. Select Panorama from your options, and my suggestion would be to use the Auto as well as Auto Crop in the Panorama dialog. The Photo Merge will export out a panorama in the same folder as the source images, and now you can edit that file just like you would edit a regular file. It's a raw file, and you'll have the full editing capabilities of a 16-bit raw image. Thanks so much for watching Florin, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode, learning a little bit more about Lightroom. If you liked this episode and you want to learn even more Lightroom, let me know because um, literally I'm just sitting here thinking of things that you might want to learn and then I try to make those things happen. So let me know in a comment right down below if you have a question or a comment or an idea for a new episode. And if you like what we're doing here at Florin and you'd love to learn more about Photoshop and photography and Lightroom, just hit that subscribe button on your screen now. We're going to send you free videos every single week. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Woo! I'm a Lightroom expert. I should teach this for a living. And click and drag an entire photo. Photo. <laughs> photo. Photo. Get your photo into Photoshop. All right. Panorama's so long. Time to think. <laughs>